where you want it. Bay 12, please. Hello there, Transformers fans, and welcome back to another Bay 12 video review. And today's video review is sponsored by our good friends over at Flame Toys, who does some really, really awesome model kits. So I'm sure there's plenty of you watching right now who are fans of building Gun Gundam model kits or other ass assorted model kits, because there's all kinds of model kits now where you can build a really awesome, fully articulated action figure with some really cool details and some of which you know you can customize and do whatever you want with and this is our first review from the model kits that flame toys sent over to us to assemble and uh, play with and show off and this is definitely the one that i was super super excited about so today we're reviewing the leo prime furai model kit and this version of Leo Prime, because you're probably thinking that doesn't quite look like the Leo Prime I know. One of the cool things about, uh, about Flame Toys is, aside from doing model kits of recognizable characters from Transformers and doing some versions of characters that come from a specific comic or other form of media, they also do their own artistic take on some of these characters with some of their model kits. And that's something I think is really cool, I think is unique. I love that they're not just trying to reproduce another image, another design that might already have a really cool or really good transforming toy because none of these model kits transform. These are highly detailed, highly articulated figures. More articulated than anything that Hasbro has produced in the red line, more articulated than anything that Super 7 produces with their Ultimates line. The articulation on and detail on these guys is fantastic. They look great, they feel great, they're fun to build. I, I love Flame Toys. Now, some of you who have been sticking with us since we did our Facebook Live show and we're doing live, rec live videos versus recorded reviews, um, I have re reviewed a couple of these in the past. And since I've reviewed a couple of these in the past, out of that box of awesome stuff they sent to us, we got their Furi Optimus Prime. So their take on G1 Optimus Prime, which is a fantastic build, a fantastic action figure. I do have this in my personal collection. I have built it. I have reviewed it on Bay 12. It hasn't, it's not on our YouTube channel, but it's one of those that I will uh, edit for later to be one of our archival or you know our here's from our facebook our former facebook review playlist or something like that I, I, i'll figure that out later when we get to it we'll cross that bridge when we get there um, but this is going to be one of our free giveaways i'm going to do this as a special promo giveaway for us and for flame toys they were gracious enough to send this to me. They didn't know I had already done this one. So that's going to be something awesome for you guys. So make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel and you're following on us on social media for when we post details about this giveaway. We're also going to be giving away one of my absolute favorite Megatron figures of all time. The Decepticon version of the IDW Megatron. This is the Megatron from the more than meets the eyes slash lost light portion of the IDW comic universe, the the main 10 year long universe that they did before they rebooted, rebooted it in uh, 2019. Um, he's from the end of phase two slash through phase three of the IDW universe where he had gone full redemption, became an Autobot, all that good stuff. It's funny that they did a Decepticon version because Megatron was never an Autobot, I mean, never an Autobot, never a Decepticon in this body. This was the body he had for himself when he became an Autobot. So inter interesting that they did a Decepticon version. I think they did it just so the fans who see this model kit and see an Autobot symbol's heads don't explode because maybe they don't read the comics. I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure as to why. It's still cool. The only difference between this and the Autobot version is the sticker. That's it. The Decepticon symbol on his chest is a sticker. That is literally the only difference between this and the Autobot version. So if you have an Autobot sticker at home and you want this to be your Autobot Megatron, just do a different sticker. That's all you got to do. It's the only difference. 
But anyway, this is gonna be one of our other free giveaways because I've already built this model kit. It's a fantastic, in fact, this model kit, the Autobot version, um, is actually what got me hooked on the Flame Toys because I am a very big fan of IDW Comics. I love what they did with the characters. I love what they did with Megatron specifically. Um, it was, it, yeah, I'm with everybody who else goes Megatron and Autobot. That's super weird. I agree. That's what I thought at first. But when I tell you, it's an incredible story and a, very emotional. It's awesome. Check it out. Do yourself, a, do yourself a kindness. Check out that story. Check out what IDW did because making Megatron and Autobot seems like some weird black magic and somehow they made it work and it worked really really good so much so that that's one of my favorite it's in my top five Megatron action figures and it doesn't even transform so but enough about that today you're here for Leo Prime we already did the build so if you haven't watched the build video yet go watch the build video it's only a few minutes long and you're gonna see me rapidly put this thing together if you want to watch me put this thing together if not if you wanted to skip that and get right to the review, that's this video right here. So that's what we're doing. Anyway, the artwork looks fantastic. Um, Flame Toys, I need a really cool print of this artwork right here. I love this Leo Prime artwork. Leo Prime is a really cool Transformer character, a really cool Maximal from Beast Wars 2nd or Beast Wars 2, whatever you want to call it. Um, it was a Japanese Beast Wars series that Hasbro did not import over to the United States. Um, you can find the sub or the dub. I'm, I'm not, look, I'm not an anime guy. I, I don't watch much anime stuff. I'm not going to say subbed or dubbed is better, but the dub is not very good. It's, it's hard to listen to at, at a lot of times. I, I don't know who did these dubs back when they did the dubs of a lot of the Japanese series that did not get imported over to the States. But whoever did these dubs, oh boy, I don't think they watched a single episode of Transformers in their life before they dubbed these. I, I really don't. That aside, this is, this is a fantastic model. Again, this is their artistic take on Leo Prime and a very cool one. Now, again, I've already assembled this, so you're not going to watch me pull a bunch of pieces out. You're going to watch me pull a completed figure out. And this completed figure looks awesome. I mean check him out this thing just looks so so cool it was a blast to build it on average it takes me about two two and a half hours to put together one of their model kits give or take and i've and i've assembled a, a handful of these at this point i've done um autobot megatron the um, Furi Optimus, the G1 version of Op their version of Optimus. I've done Shattered Glass Optimus. That one was a lot of fun too. That's a totally different model kit from the G1 Optimus. Um, I've done Shattered Glass Drift. I've done the new Rodimus from IDW. Also one of my absolute favorite Rodimus figures of all time. And I've done this one now. Haven't done Windblade yet. Windblade's another one on my list I really want to do. I also really want to do Devastator. Um, haven't done that yet. And I'm looking forward to putting together one of the uh, Seeker molds for the first time. They've, they've done a few Seekers, which is also really cool, plus a handful of other characters. But yeah, I've, I've put together a few of these. And this one, like all the others I've put together so far, was a lot of fun. So sometimes you get some cool display options, like the display the way I have him configured right now where he has two regular red shoulder pads uh, two regular tufts 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 puffs whatever you want to call it of fur right here on his sides and these regular blades on his forearms Really, really awesome. Um, that head sculpt looks cool. You've got that Max right, right there on his chest. His chest does not open up. I know it kind of looks like it does, but it, it, it does not open up. I love how he's got this big mane just kind of shooting up, almost Dragon Ball Z style. 
on the back of his collar here. I think that was a really cool design choice for this guy. The head sculpt looks really cool. Even his, even his uh, ears here, his little pointy bits, even those articulate. I like the, the little fur bits on the torso there, down here on the side of the legs, plus you got the inner robot mode thighs right there. You got little bits of fur shooting off on the sides of his knees, around his ankles. You've got the lion talons on the foot. I, w I wish those came in black. I might, I might custom paint those talons black or silver at some point. I haven't decided yet. Um, oh, and then, of course, you also have these cool little, little thruster bits on his back. I almost forgot to mention that. Fully articulated, um, so fully articulated. Head is on a ball joint. Neck is also on a ball joint in that torso down there. Like I said, his ears do rotate forward and back. I kind of like to have them towards the back. I think it looks cooler. Fully articulated shoulders. The shoulder pad articulates. The shoulder articulates. Upper bicep, double jointed elbows. You've got this wrist joint right here where the wrist connects at the ball joint. The wrist is on a ball joint, as I just mentioned. Um, the upper torso is on a ball joint, lower to torso is on a ball joint. These little hip pieces, those, those panels articulate. Articulated hips, double jointed knees, ball jointed ankles, even the heel has a joint. You got a little toe pivoting action right there. This guy is crazy, awesome, detailed. Just, just so many cool details. Okay, now for his more lion-like accessories. So, you have his lion head, because he's supposed to be able to transform into a lion, right? Kind of robotic looking, but overall a cool design. You've got the blaster cannons coming out of the top there for a cyclone blaster. You'll notice there's a piece right here that's red, and that's also connected onto a hinge, which is also connected to a ball joint. So what you do to attach this piece is you can remove either one of these little shoulder pieces right here, and then just clip that onto place. And now he's got his lion shoulder cannon. Um, you also have the option, get out all those other accessories now. You also have the option to swap out one of his little wrist blades here that has a little peg on it. You can swap this with either wrist, either the left or the right. You just unpeg it, it sits on four little pegs on his forearm there, swap that out. This red piece is on a peg right there. And then just tab that on there. Plug that back on there. And you can put that little shoulder filler right back on. And he can wield his shield or line head as a shield or as a cannon. You can articulate it to it flips around and you know now he's got like this double barrel arm cannon which is really cool so so you have some really neat options uh, with the with the right arm now of course though that uh, shield accessory can swap over to either arm it doesn't really matter which arm you display it on it's your figure it's your model kit build it to however you wish flame toys gave you some really cool options in that regard all right, now for his other shoulder. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pull that shoulder all the way off of that socket right there, and we're gonna slide that off. So we're gonna get rid of that. And then we're gonna take this swappable shoulder section, which has the lion's tail, which every single one of these joints is articulated. You assemble all of these joints together. So each each one is on its own little hinge there, and then on the end, it's ball jointed as well. So you have some really cool options. You can kind of have it hanging over like this, hanging off to the back, 
shooting out, however you want. Again, you got a lot of cool options. So similar to that socket from earlier, you just take that, take that little shoulder bit right there, put it on, and then just come over to Leo Convoy here, just slide that on, and boom, now he's got his other very awesome looking shoulder piece. And, and I love how, how ceremonial when you get all of his other looking gear on here. I love how ceremonial he ends up looking overall. Now with these model kits for the accessories, you also get some swappable hands that you also assemble. So here I have a couple of swappable fists. For each hand, you also get a grasping hand that you assemble so you can hold his sword. And you get this other hand where he's kind of got this open hand gesture where he's got his fingers kind of flared out in different directions, which also looks really cool. You have that for both hands. We're going to put the um, grasping hand in his right hand there so he can wield his sword here in a moment. Take off that. Put that back on. We're going to put that that uh, that lion head back over here on his there we go on his right shoulder and then we're going to come over here to the sword so you also build the weapons and stuff so the sword looks really cool love I love the the sheath for it you'll notice that there's a little piece attached here to the side that's a swappable hip panel. And you have two, you have one for both sides. So you can take this piece off and put this one on in its place and vice versa. You can have them both with peg holes on them. So you can have the sword on either side if you want. And then you just take this, you just peg that back on. And now he's got his sword. And the sword looks really cool, so just pull it. Try not to disassemble him while you're at it. There we go. Just pull that right out. And here is his awesome, awesome sword. Um, I don't think it's meant to be like the Star Saber. I think it's just meant to be like this really cool energon like long sword. I love how just like a lot of the rest of this look for this version, love how ceremonial that this version of Leo Prime looks. Um, don't get me wrong, the original toy's cool. I don't know if it ever got an official States release. I don't think it did. Um, the Collector's Club, Beast Wars Uprising, Re retool of Orion Pax was cool. The universe retool of Cybertron Leo Breaker Leo Prime was cool. And, e and I'm really excited for the upcoming Transformers Legacy Evolution Leo Convoy especially. I'm very, very excited for that. But if I had to pick a favorite Leo Prime figure, I'm, it's got to be this one. This one just looks the coolest. I love the design they went with here. Um, and then, of course, also on his sword here is one of his subordinates from the cartoon. I think this one was Moon, maybe? Maybe it was the other other little bot that was with Moon. But I think that's really cool that you get that little face there on the hilt. And then to put his sword in his hand, you just pull the fingers off of the front. Hold the sword in, in position, and then put the fingers back on. Try not to disassemble him more while you're at it. Oh, I'm trying to put it on upside down. That's why it's not going on. There we go. And there you go. And that's that's a really cool look holding that sword. Again, with the with the articulation options, you can get some really really awesome poses off with this guy. So stay tuned for those promotion photos. 
that we that we'll post on social media for this because I think that's awesome. And last but not least, there's one more really awesome accessory here that makes this figure stand out for me that I absolutely love. And he comes with this really nice velvet red cape. Cloth goods with a bit of wire going down each side so you can get some cool different poses with it. I love this. I love capes. Capes are so cool. Um, I know not everybody's going to agree with that. Some people will probably be commenting, no capes. Well, Edna's not right about everything, and she's especially wrong when it comes to capes, because not only are capes, you know, just really awesome functionally because you can flap them or flare them or make them look dramatic, but they look cool. And in a ceremonial sense, they really look cool. So what we're gonna do to put this cape on, it doesn't really uh, tab in in a specific, well, it does tab in in a specific way, but it doesn't like click in or plug on. You don't have to remove a piece to put it on. So what you do is you put this little, this little gray piece in here. You, you put the little cape holes over the little notches there. And then what you do is you come to this shoulder specifically, try to, try to pinch this like so, because it's, it's going to be tough putting it on there. And You're just going to push that in. It's a little, it's a little tough to get into position. Push that in and then the, it's going to sit over two little brackets on the inner part of the shoulder. I'm going to kind of pose it up a little bit. Very, very regal looking, which is, just makes this look so cool. There we go. And there you have it. There he is with that awesome side cape look. It'd be, it'd be cool if there was an option to kind of like tab it under his, uh, his little collar of or his main here, um, or his robot mode main. I think that would be neat, but I love having the cape on the side. I think it's a really, really cool look for him. Overall, I just, I don't know. He just looks so ceremoniously awesome. It, like I said, fun build. I love that they gave you some cool display options with get this guy aside from just, all right, here you go, put this shoulder on, put this on, and that's it, that's all you get. I like how you have swappable shoulders so you can get a more regular robotic look or, you know, a more play friendly look when, cause you know, you're probably going to knock some stuff off since you're, unless you know, you want it in this configuration, in which case, you know, super glue some of these pieces in place if you, if you really must. Um, what's nice about these model kits is you don't really need glue to fully assemble them and for them to stay together. Um, especially if you're just assembling them for display. Um, and there is one other cool little accessory he came, he came with. He doesn't come with a stand or anything, but in case you have display stands for model kits that you've built in the past, you get this swappable little plug piece. It's got a little peg hole on the bottom. And what this, where this goes is right here on the back of his butt. I, yes, I know. I don't need to say it out loud, but you pull this little piece out right here, you slot that in, and then you can peg him on to various figure stands or display stands in case you want to get some other cool little poses with this figure. Just another little awesome option they gave you in case you want to get one of those cool little stands. Because I know there's a lot of model kit builders out there who put their figures on really cool display stands and really awesome flight or action air poses and that's that's something you can totally do with this guys thank you so much for tuning in to today's bay 12 video review where we reviewed our first flame toys sponsored review where they sent us some really cool model kits for us to build and play with and show off to you guys so that you can see how awesome these things really are i love the flame toys model kits it's honestly what got me into building model kits um, i don't build a ton of them i'm very choosy with my model kit since I collect a lot of things, but I collect a lot of Transformers stuff personally. 
So this definitely fits the bill there for me. And they do other stuff other than Transformers. They also do G.I. Joe, and they do some really cool Power Ranger stuff. They have a Megazord that they, that they did in their artistic style that I think looks amazing. I mean, I'm not a super huge Power Rangers fan. I, I've always thought Power Rangers was cool, especially when I was a kid. Um, Green Original Green Ranger is the best Power Ranger of all time. You will never change my mind on that. But this, this new Megazord that they're doing, whew, dude, so cool. Check out Flame Toys. They got a lot of awesome stuff. Stay tuned for more content here on Bay 12. Check out some of our other reviews, some of our other Transformers, and a lot of the other stuff that we review here on Bay 12 as well. Stay tuned for more of these. Follow us on social media and make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss out on, you know, some of these free giveaways that we're about to do with these guys. I'm, I'm really excited. Um, and I hope you guys, whoever wins these, whenever we get to that point, you know, you tag us, you show it off and all that cool stuff because we want to see um, your, your take on these builds as well. Um, stay tuned for some of these other builds from Flame Toys aside from the ones I'm doing because out of the ones they sent us, I'm not going to be the only one building these model kits. Some of the other guys here with us on Bay 12 are going to be building them as well. So stay tuned for those build videos and we'll see you guys later. We'll see you another time. Transform and roll out. That's it, man. Game over, man. Game over. <laughs>